I think there are a couple of things for me that I just wanted to talk about, if that's okay. Um, I think the first observation for me is um, some people think business is about making money. And it is undoubtedly the case that businesses can make money and indeed have to make money to return value to shareholders, at least when you have external investors. But I think more fundamentally, business is about um, identifying what you can do better. Right? It's identifying something that isn't as good as it should be in society and having the gumption, the imagination, the vision to put your own life on the line, your livelihood, your career, your reputation on the line to try and fix it. And in doing so, um, create something special for yourself, for the people that work with you, uh, and hopefully for customers and society, and ultimately then return money to shareholders. And I always think of it that way around, not the other way around. It's not what can we do to make money, it's what can we do to make things better, and the money's the enabler. And the, the title today was about building back better. And so when I look at that and think, what are the two biggest issues facing society today? Um, recognizing that thanks to the pandemic, we have a mass kind of conversation across our society about what the future could look like. I think the two biggest issues, and, and I wrote this down before listening to Lord Barrymore's speech, but um, were the destructiveness, the existential threat which climate change poses to the existence, not only of our species, but of every species on this planet. Um, and um, inequality. And I think inequality in the very broadest sense, uh, you know, I think it's shocking that the latest data I looked at said that over the past five years, the incomes of the wealthiest 20% of society had gone up by 5% and the incomes of the poorest 20% of society had gone down by 2%. It is astonishing that we have a world in which the poor are getting poorer. And I think too often, um, short-term decisions by businesses and politicians compound that problem. And I say short-term decisions because look, I want a successful capitalism where companies, entrepreneurs with imagination can thrive and succeed and create better solutions. But we're not going to get that when we're creating a section of society that's so poor they can't even be customers. And we don't get, get that when companies through a race to the bottom exploit workers to the point they can no longer participate as citizens. And instead, actually, what we get is, is a societal threat. Why do people vote for extremist parties? Why do people vote for extreme measures in society that kind of rip the very heart out of it? It's because, thanks to inequality, the system's rigged against them. And there is literally, you know, for them, there's nothing to lose. And we need a society where everyone's got a stake. So for me, I think building back better is really about addressing these two things. And it's certainly not about, you know, kind of box ticking and tokenism. It's, it cannot be about businesses doing whatever they were going to do anyway. And then like filling in some forms to be certified in some particular way. So um, thinking about that as, as business leaders, you know, kind of what, what we can be doing to build a back better. Right? For me, it's like, what are we doing fundamentally that is going to create value for our shareholders? at the same time as tackling those fundamental problems. And, and I think for octopus percentage, look, we're, we're, in a way we're lucky. You know, one of the questions we asked when we started this business, which today employs 1,400 people, 1,200 in the UK, which is exporting its technology around the world, which has a revenue that this year will probably exceed three billion pounds um, and is only five years old. But the question we asked ourselves right at the beginning was, um, energy companies have typically made money by causing climate change. What if you can create an energy company that makes money by tackling climate change? And I think asking yourself questions like that as we think about building about better is the way in which we can not only run the business we want to run in ticks and boxes, but actually align our business goals and success with societally important outcomes. So um, in no particular order, you wanted three things. And by the way, can I just say that is so bloody hard? I had about 11. I've pared them down, I've combined them. I think this is a compromise. And I hate doing that because compromise is the worst thing you can ever do. However, here are three thoughts that aligned with that. So the first is, look, um, we've all got a different religious belief, but broadly speaking, I think we have one life. Um, and we spend about a third of it at work. And if we're spending about a third of our life at work, um, and that work is not fulfilling and enjoyable and enabling us to, to be kind of spending our days doing something that matters to us. Well, it's the equivalent of losing two or three decades off our lives. 
So the first thing for me is business is best when you don't hang your personality up at the door and you don't ask any of your team to do the same. So what we have to do is create work, which is not, it's not just creating a fulfilling, motivated workforce in order to deliver better business outcomes for people that happen to be lucky enough to be the owners. It's actually saying fundamentally, human life is better if the businesses we create enable people to be themselves and live their lives whilst working. And I think that, um, you know, the, the advice I give when I knew, I, I sit down with all our new starts uh, and I say to them like, you know, if this job isn't making you happy, please leave, right? Not because I don't want you here, but because I don't want you to be unhappy. Now that puts the onus on as a company to create a workplace in which people will be fulfilled. But if they're gonna be better off surfing or indeed going and earning as much as they like in the city, they're all cool. Um, but what's not cool is sacrificing your life to make other people happy. So it doesn't matter whether you're making your parents happy or your spouse happy or the people at school, you've got to impress them. All of those are the worst reasons to have a job and to do the thing you're doing. So number one for me is create businesses where people can be themselves all day, every day. I think fundamentally that is a better humanity, but it's also a better business because people will look after their teammates and their customers better when that is fulfilling for them rather than delivering a KPI. In fact, as a business, I, I, I don't even know whether we've got any KPIs really because fundamentally that alignment delivers tremendous outcomes. I think the second thing for me is to be bold, looking past issues, focusing on the long-term and think about what is right. And when I say be bold, let me give you an example. Um, there's a friend I used to go out for, a group of friends, we'd go out for curry all the time, like maybe once every few months. And every time we're out for curry, this friend, he was a former journalist at Sunday Times, like quite, you know, an achieving guy. And he said, I'm going to start my own business. I've just got to do these three things first. And every time we saw him, it's like, yeah, I've got this three. I've just got to do one more thing. And one day I said, look, um, I need to use his name there. And I said, look, Dave, I said, um, every time we do this, you tell me you're going to, I think you're a one entrepreneur, not an entrepreneur, right? And that's cool, but either decide you're going to do it or decide you're not. Um, but let's just be clear, you will never have all the answers. You just have to take a leap of faith and go or give up on the thought. Anyway, next time we went out for curry, he'd done it. Um, he'd set up his own business. And the mind-blowing thing was he was happier than he'd ever been. And today, he still runs his own business and it does pretty well. Um, but it's the happiness that resulted from that bravery that matters. And I think most things can be, you know, if he'd done that and it didn't work out, that would be fine. He'd probably be able to go back to a job that was making him happier than his previous one anyway. But that boldness, I think, is everything. And, and, and let's remember, your gut is an amazing processing device, right? You know, there's a reason that we make decisions emotionally and then backfill rationally, right? It's because of this incredible, it's like, it's like machine learning, it's like artificial intelligence, except it's not artificial. Our brain is processing, you know, incredibly well, and we should read those signals. A couple of quick things on that. You know, when you play Scrabble and you're, you're, you're really working hard to manage the letters on your app, time and again, you've nearly got a seven-letter word. Um, and eventually you give up, you're jacking all your letters and get some new ones. How often do you find that the new ones, the random selector from the bag gives you a seven letter word, all right? It's quite spectacular how often actually, you know, serendipity can really help. And we only get serendipity when we make those brave decisions. Um, and, and I think this really matters at the time of building back better because the world of tomorrow has to be different than today. And that means the fine grained plans that people agonize over that we've been trained to do in management consultants and large corporates, that fine-grained planning is going to carry more noise than signal. Getting on with it will carry signal and you will discover the next stage. And it's like a chess game. You can't predict it on advance, but take one move at a time. The next couple of moves will start revealing themselves. Um, so the most important thing I think for me is bold actions, which align with what's important to you and to society are more likely to enable you to provide a platform for success. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that thing about three things is really hard. So I'm going to do a little one and then maybe another little one. So maybe three and two, two and two halves. Is that right? Um, so look, um, today we're talking about business and we're business leaders, CEOs and founders. Uh, my advice is, uh, look, we talked about money at the beginning. Uh, by all means, get rich. By all means, work hard to make yourself wealthy. But make others rich in the process. Think like Sweden. Sweden has created some incredibly successful entrepreneurs. Um, but a society which creates wealth at the same time for everybody else is a dramatically better than one that hollows things out. So ask yourself, 
what can you do with the people you hire, the people you recruit, your team and society to bring wealth and value to them? For example, in our case, you know, relentlessly driving down the cost of energy because for a low income household, utility bills are the difference between being able to send the kids on a school trip and not. We can contribute to millions of people's well being if we get this right. And for our staff, every single member of staff is a shareholder. Now, I hold more equity and the, the, the early founders hold more, but everyone in this company will do well if the business is successful. And I say life changingly well, it's not a token, all right? It should, and, and it's not there as a motive or incentive. The salary should be, and the job itself should be the motive and incentive for every day to get up. But it means if we do well, then we treat everyone fairly. And, and seeing people's eyes light up when we first had a, a round of secondary uh, during an investment round was, in the, it was my, my second proudest moment alongside helping drive the energy price cap that drove down prices for 11 million households. So make yourself rich, make everyone else rich while you're at it. And finally, the second uh, half of my last point um, is that great people are everywhere. We've got to remember that people can make ends meet in today's society. They can hold their lives together. They run clubs and sport and they bring kids up. They, do, they get mortgages, they do impossible things. If they can do that, they can do what almost any company wants. You just have to embrace their capabilities and their skills to deliver that. And the more we infantilize people and we drown them in process and we tell them what to do, we micromanage them, the more we, the, the less we let them do that magic at scale. And so I think um, for me, um, just remember that almost anyone is talented enough to do a great job for you. You just have to find the right job. And if you do that, it'll make them happy so they don't have to give up the job and go surfing. And it'll make you happy because they'll deliver more value into your business and for your customers than they would have done if you micromanaged them. So I think for me, fundamentally building back better through people, not because it is going to be better for our business, because it's the right thing to do. In the words of John Kay, delivers the obliquity that will make it better for everyone. Thank you.